Hello and welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's largest platform for entrepreneurs. We bring you expert advice on how to make and manage your money right, what you need to do when it comes to hiring right, innovation, strategy, anything and everything in fact related to the life of an entrepreneur covered right here on the show. I want to welcome in someone who's a very special when it comes to the entrepreneurial community because of her personal journey and she serves as an inspiration to young entrepreneurs, particularly to young women entrepreneurs. Dipali Goenka of Wellspun joining us tonight. Pali, so good having you joining us on the show tonight. Uh, there's a common uh, thread, if I can really call it that, in a lot of the interviews that you do, where you talk about the fact that, uh, you know, when you started out, uh, it was difficult, if I could really, you know, use that term, for you to get taken seriously uh, because of the nature of the industry that you're in. Uh, for anyone who's watching this interview, what would you like to tell them about what those early days were like and how you really managed to face those challenges and internalize them and rise above? So I'll tell you something uh, for all of us here. Uh, first of all, the thing is to believe in yourself. And I think that's where it comes in from. Um, uh, with me, uh, the strong desire to do something and make a difference. Um, and from the community that I come in, I wanted to really make a difference. Um, and also lead an example for my daughters, actually. Both are like budding entrepreneurs in, in their own right. And for me, that was where it started from. As we move towards a 5 trillion GDP that we're talking about and the India story that we're talking about, uh, we all need to think about not just women development. We need to think about women-led development. I think that's something we all need to really look at. And the whole idea, there'll be skepticism everywhere um, in anything that you do, whether it's a woman or a man. Uh, but I think you need to master what you do. You need to roll up your sleeves. Um, uh, and it's all about that. It's all about uh, really uh, working hard and, uh, you know, uh, really taking it head on. I always believe in that. 2020 then has not been a good year, Dipali. You know, speaking of challenges, 2021 though, do you think uh, most businesses and entrepreneurs would have rolled up their sleeves and will be ready to really take business and, you know, take things head on? You know, um, 2020 uh, showed the world that it's never going to be the same. Yeah. Um, so uh, it was a crisis for sure it is a crisis and it will go on till 2021 we will live in the shadows of this crisis but it, it is also a matter of choice for each one of us uh, you, know, if we, you know it's like never let a crisis go waste make the most of it uh, how can you make the most of it is by learning uh, by being agile by communicating and I think these are the things that we embraced and i think i would really uh, put that forward to uh, each one of us because i think agility is the key where you can embrace the change learning is the key because this was an error i mean today imagine i'm i'm meeting you virtually that's the way we have worked i mean that's the way uh, we have worked all through where we've had meetings on ms teams um, we've had factory virtual walkthroughs We've had 3D showroom walkthroughs, uh, you know, at our, uh, I mean, we created a 3D digital showroom. Um, and I think, uh, you know, digital audits, digital uh, quality checks. So I think it is about embracing uh, where we are going to be. So I think that is, and that will become the new normal for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think e-commerce and digitization has accelerated 35%. And I will say that there are opportunities for each one of us. It's about uh, making the most of what you have. Um, yeah. I want to speak then about uh, the opportunities, Dipali, and uh, really uh, focus on uh, something that the chief economic advisor, you know, during our high impact launch week said to us that the recovery has started coming in more so in the uh, manufacturing space rather than the services space. What is your opinion really on that? And for someone who's looking at the marriage or the merger between uh, you know, digital and the, the traditional or, you know, the non-technology or the non-technical uh, space, where does that marriage really lie? You know, how do you really combine the two in the manufacturing space? 
so um digitization and manufacturing will have to go hand in hand and uh, uh, when i talk about manufacturing and yes manufacturing is chugging along to normalcy because uh, if i talk about ourselves as well we are at 95% uh, uh, you know capacity at the moment and uh, we are like chugging along uh, towards now you know uh, you know the whole operations um, but industry 4.0 uh, would be a reality which i think uh, will be the new way of looking at things um, we we talk about india being a great opportunity after china and uh, um, i think uh, it will become a very important place where if we have to be competitive um, yes of course uh, uh, there are a lot of other uh, policies and factors that will favor but people like us in the manufacturing will have to adapt new changes will have to adapt the way of uh, you know the new normal and that's going to be industry 4.0 so what is industry 4.2 i think it's all about getting everything looking at your efficiencies getting it on a platform getting getting to see how we can really you know um, have a better turn around better you know kind of efficiencies of scale because uh, it is definitely manpower intensive can be really with a little tweak in it can we really uh, leverage that far better in the terms of uh, effectivity will be the way forward as we look at it so you know um uh, the global supply chain uh, will be a very important aspect so linking the industry 4.0 to uh, to the global supply chain uh, where uh, you know if you can have the analytics where you know what is uh, the markets looking at what the consumers looking at feeding it into your uh, operations and uh, feeding it into what your you know supply chain will need to uh, outsource i think it it, it is a great uh, link that integrates uh, so uh, definitely that's going to be the way forward uh, for uh, uh, for us i mean it, it's going to be a new reality we all need to start looking at it very very differently uh, across the whole supply chain as well for a company that's as large as yours the pali how do you manage to you know really stay agile and continue innovating and really continue to stay at the forefront of things what can you tell us so you know the whole thing is about communication mm -hmm. uh, whole uh, i mean for me uh, when the whole covid struck the um, and the idea was to communicate with each one of our people and uh, also compassion it is the year of compassion uh, you know we've been always talking about health as of a company it was important to talk about the health of a people and i think that's where it started off from one month when the whole world was under lockdown i think i'll tell you something where that's a time uh, you know and uh, and as the factories opened up the important thing was that whether our people are safe whether our communities are safe how are we going to chug back so i think that's where we geared ourselves mm -hmm. to the new normal and that's where it moved you know that's where you know we started uh, moving along uh, you know to uh, to where we needed to be um, and that's 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 the kind of a new reality new world um, you know uh, where people also felt comfortable um, i mean you know communicating on the shop floors with my people celebrating uh, you know last quarter we did the highest numbers and we celebrated on the shop floor uh, you know looking at how we can celebrate smaller things in life i think that's going to be a very important uh, way of looking at things um, so compassion um, health of a people uh, and i think innovation they are all going to be very very important uh, ways of looking at things you talking about health and uh, you know compassion and health and i want to dovetail that into the fact that you entered a new segment which was masks really reacting to the opportunities being presented by the pandemic for a business that is you know serving the external environment and looking at you know whether there are opportunities in certain segments and sectors what advice would you like to give them about how to react you know more quickly how to react better perhaps uh, to the opportunities that are being presented i think for uh, for us it was a very uh, different uh, you know uh, thing you know where we embraced that change uh, we already have a technical textile vertical at pulse in india where we manufacture these spun lace and the needle uh, needle punch and uh, you know uh, that was i think an automatic uh, kind of uh, you know uh, extension of uh, what we do and uh, uh, and as we uh, we we started distributing masks in the community when i spoke about the health that's where we started manufacturing the masks sure. so um so whether it was the surgical masks or the n95 and the fabric masks uh, we started doing that so i think it's all about looking at and grabbing that opportunity but i also believe that you got to uh, be the best in that in the way you do it so like for us even to get the bi certification for every product that we do 
the clean environment that we created um, for uh, you know our masks uh, you know actually separated us uh, from everybody else uh, because I think that's where we really worked on that anything that you do it has to be uh, the best in class uh, there has to be differentiation in the terms of innovation that you do so uh, extension from the masks now to the disinfectant wipes will be very important so um, looking at uh, you know th that kind of a uh, kind of an extension of what we do in health and hygiene uh, is going to be uh, the way forward for us at Wellspun. and I think like uh, uh, for people and for uh, uh, you know uh, new entrepreneurs and budding entrepreneurs, identifying where that uh, opportunity is and looking uh, looking and embracing that change and speed would be very very important. Dipali, I have to slip into a very short break on that note, but we'll come back with much more on the other side. Welcome back with us here in Leaders of Tomorrow and Tonight. I'm in conversation with Dipali Koenka. We were talking about uh, technology earlier. I just want to go back to that and talk about, uh, uh, you know, future technologies or more technologies that now increasingly are here to stay, uh, whether it is AR, whether it is VR. Uh, do you think that enough small businesses are using IoT, are using future technologies, are using, you know, uh, artificial intelligence really in their businesses when it comes to the manufacturing space? And if something is holding them back, what is it, in your opinion, that's really holding them back? I think with the whole startup culture that we have in a country and the infrastructure that is being developed and the kind of opportunities that the government of India has given the startup uh, environment is a big, big deal. And I think... Uh, all the innovations, uh, AI, IoT, are uh, starting from our country as well. I mean, I think we have become uh, uh, that uh, you know kind of a place for the budding talent uh, uh, for IoT and AI and uh, innovation. Um, definitely, it's a great opportunity, and um, there is, uh, and I think we are uh, leading this uh, pace here. I mean, I would say that. You think 2020 then is a year of uh, communication and uh, compassion, 2021 then Dipali, what's that going to be characterized by? So for me and for Wellspun, I think uh, if I look at our business, I'll just sit back and talk about our business, what we, what we, uh, what we have. Um, manufacturing, towel, sheets, bedding, uh, um, but yes, looking at how antiviral will play a very antimicrobial health and wellness, health and care, as you know, and the home body economy. So the focus on home is going to be very important. So we have started developing products accordingly, whether it's the towels or the sheets, or even the rugs and the carpets. Um, we see that as a very big opportunity um, from the manufacturing side. Um, as we spoke about digitization, uh, Christie, if you know, we acquired that brand in 2006, which made the first towel for the Queen of England, 1857. Um, is going to be a very big digital play uh, globally uh, for that brand. Um, and closer home spaces in Wellspun uh, with, uh, you know, with the home and the home enthusiasts coming into fall because more people, I mean, I, have, I haven't seen uh, the kind of makeovers at homes more faster than anywhere in this time where, uh, you know, the bedrooms have become offices, bedrooms have become school rooms. Um, and I think you see that kind of an opportunity for spaces where is, uh, being a thoughtful brand, uh, you know, using innovation to create, uh, you know, kind of opportunities uh, like for sleep because health and sleep go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So our innovation like high grow being a very important aspect to that and well spun, which is har ghar well spun. And everybody knows that the tier two and the tier three in our country is going to be where the growth accelerator is going to be on. And there are more aspirations to buy online from this part. So definitely that is something that we see in Harkar Velspan. Speaking of compassion, uh, you know, I want to talk about compassion for the environment and caring for the environment. And that's going to come back into focus in uh, 2021, you feel? Uh, very much so. I think I can't forget that. And we... Um, uh, we, we definitely at Wellspin don't uh, very, very clearly. Uh, I'll just give you a little insight into what we do. 30 million liters of water that we recycle, where not a drop of water is used uh, you know, um, from the community. We use it 
you know, we use, uh, you know, all the recyclable water in our manufacturing. So um, the, the community has water to drink. Uh, the farmers have water per irrigation. Uh, so that is, again, a very important aspect to what we do. Um, circularity, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, that you, we, we've heard about the landfills and, you know, textile, we know is one of the biggest polluter, uh, you know, and we, we want to really see how we can really uh, cap that up. So um, I'll just give you a small little example, um, and uh, that's really close to my heart. Um, you know, we have a little brand called Spun, where we upcycle around two tons of the rags that are generated out of our factories. And here, uh, the, you know, we, uh, the women from the communities, uh, they make, uh, you know, rugs out of it, cushions out of it. Uh, so what it does, they get, uh, they, uh, they get employment, they earn the living, and also they, they, they get to manage their own bank account. Dipali, I want to talk about, uh, you know, a smart approach and what that should look like uh, towards money. A lot of people have lost their jobs in 2020. Uh, you know, a lot of people have been unfortunately forced to perhaps rethink business models and strategies. Uh, in 2021, for small businesses uh, that are looking at managing their money smartly, what advice would you have? It's going to be the resurgence of entrepreneurs, and especially from a country like us, which has a great opportunity, uh, for sure. Um, but I think the important uh, aspect is about upskilling, upskilling yourself and upskilling your teams as well. I think, uh, uh, I mean, I think each one of us has upskilled ourselves to the whole digital world and embracing that very, very, uh, very, very clearly and openly. I think that's going to be something that I think each one of us has to do. So embracing technology, whether it's AI, IoT, uh, you know, uh, going to be, uh, you know, the way forward and agility, yeah. agility to change and transform agility to uh, you know make the most of that crisis uh, is definitely going to be uh, very important i think we all need to know that uh, th this is a crisis but it is also a choice that we need to make sure. and we have to make uh, whether that choice is uh, either to move ahead embrace the change be agile uh, communicate um, i think and drive that change um, above all uh, is going to be very, very important. So it's our choice by the end of the day. And I think if we can do that, we can make a difference, um, definitely. 2021 uh, is, uh, you know, going to put the focus back on entrepreneurs. At least that's, you know, the big theme that we're going with here on Leaders of Tomorrow, empowering a billion dreams. Dipali, you know, what are the skill sets that you think are going to be called into focus sharply in 2021? Uh, you know, is it, you know, for entrepreneurs looking at upskilling or reskilling themselves, what would you want to say? You know what? Um, cost is a very important aspect. And I think we have to be frugal in what we do. And uh, um, COVID taught us that. I think uh, uh, even, uh, you know, when the whole lockdown happened, we started a very strong measure in the terms of cost control. Um, looking at uh, planning ahead in advance. I mean, what are the needs? Uh, looking at your plans again, re-looking at what needs to be done. I think that is going to, planning is going to be the key. Frugality is going to be the key here. If you look at the opportunity, grab it now. I would, I always believe in that. Embrace that. Embrace that change as well now. I think it's all about that. And sure. above all, communicate. Above all, communicate what you're wanting to do. Uh, not only with your people, with your partners, um, everybody as well. Okay, my last question, you know, and we were talking earlier about funding and managing money. I want to talk about managing money and raising money, in fact, uh, for uh, women entrepreneurs, research showing that single digits is the kind of percentage of the total funds coming into the ecosystem, going into women-led and founded businesses. For someone watching tonight's interview, what is your advice on, you know, how perhaps things will change? How a woman entrepreneur uh, should perhaps be raising money differently if they're struggling what they should keep in mind when it comes to raising money, what would you like to tell them? I know I'll tell you one thing. My, uh, my daughters are budding entrepreneurs and my younger daughter uh, has a startup called Cool Kanya, which is a women's platform. Uh, I mean, I, I mean I'll, I'll give an advice as I give to my daughters as well and the budding entrepreneurs here, that guys believe in yourself, believe in what you do. And definitely if your product has a differentiation, you will get the money and the uh, investment that you're looking at. All right. Dipali Goenka, thank you so much for your time. Same here too. Take care. Completely out of time in this episode of Leaders of Tomorrow. If you have any feedback for us, our contact details are up on your screens as we speak. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.